because there's so many mindset traps that go by the wayside when the only thing we're thinking about is the food or the weight loss. So we're only thinking about the things that we see with the eye rather than really looking and taking time to think about what we're thinking about and what's going on inside our heart. So um, I'm gonna begin actually by sharing with you that my whole program is based upon this one Bible verse, which is very familiar for all of us, but we've probably never made that connection of this Bible verse with, um, with you know, eating right and taking care of ourselves, right? So let me, let me share, all right? It's Romans 12, 2. And uh, if you don't have a Bible, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. It says, And be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what is that Bible verse actually stating when it comes to the way We've taken care of ourselves. Now, for some of us, we've been on and off diets most of our life. Some of us, it only happened later on in life in our adulthood when, you know, we, we weren't as, as active. For myself, I will share with you, I've been struggling with my weight probably since the time I was born. Some of you don't know, I was born a 12-pound baby, and I was a baby of six. All my brothers and sisters, we, all, we were all chunky, uh, but for myself... Um, when I got to be age 12, I weighed 180 pounds. So it was at that time when I started to learn about insight and wisdom. And it taught me to really think about what I'm thinking about. I didn't have the opportunity to actually connect mindful thinking based on the wisdom of God till I became an adult. And then little by little, God start, started to open up what was really going on inside of me and what was holding me bound to losing control of eating. So in this Bible verse where it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, there's many things that are happening. In the physical world, in society, we see you know, the restaurants, we see the tradition of food. Uh, we're always being you know, tempted by the food giants and also, we're all, all, always being fed the thought of our physical self through, through glamour, through uh, the diet industry. But the whole thing that we're missing is our thought pattern. Now, our thought patterns that keep us trapped are probably the defective type way of thinking. And tonight, uh, we're going to focus on a lesson that's entitled, Turn Your Frustration into Faith. Right? So... What it is, is you and I have fallen into frustration time and time again because we're looking at the all or nothing. It's sort of like every time you and I mess up, and if it seems to prolong itself for a little while, we just have the attitude like, ah, I'm just, I'm just going to throw in the towel. I'm all done. You know, this is too stressful for me. I can't handle it, right? But have you ever thought of what your... your um? Your problem would look like if you brought that problem to God in prayer. And if you kept bringing that, God, that, that prayer to God over and over again, do you think maybe that your thoughts and your feelings would begin, begin to change? Well, I'm encouraging you today to start praying every day and to make that a part of your everyday life. Because in this Bible verse, we're taught to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. He didn't say, God is not telling us to try to be transformed. He's not telling you to think about being transformed. He's telling us and instructing us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing means that every day we have to make it new, make it new because every day we're gonna have negative mindsets and neg negative attitudes and even hopelessness, right? That's gonna come into our heart and mind. And so we need to be able to bring things in a, uh, on a daily basis to the Lord, okay? So we need to renew our mind and our soul. Our soul is our attitude. We don't want that add a heck with it attitude to be around too long because we know 
If we don't bring it to Jesus, our problem is just going to get bigger and bigger, right? So let me start by asking you, how many of you came here tonight feeling frustrated about losing weight and keeping it off? Well, chances are, I would probably think that 100% of you can agree that that's why you're here, right? It's because you're frustrated. And trust me, I know and I, and I have experienced the cries of my heart for many years. But I want to share an important message. Frustration is the root of trying to lose weight all on my own. I tried and tried again and found myself getting falling in, back into that trap and not knowing how to get myself out. But Jesus provided a way. My motives all my life was because I wanted to look good so people would approve of me. First thing, I want to look in the mirror, right? And think, oh yeah, you know, you're looking good. That's not a good thing. What we want is we want to start making the changes for what's going on inside here. I have a little saying that I've been saying uh, often um, in conversation with my coaching clients, and that is, if we can focus on the burden internally being heavier than that number on the scale, that's what's going to mo motivate us to move forward. It's not going to be the number on a scale. It's going to be more than that. When you have problems with resisting cravings and you pray to God because you went on an unexpected binge, know that God hears the cries of your heart. So let me ask you, how often have you even thought of possibly praying to God because you're trying to lose weight, but maybe you didn't even know what to say or not even believe that he would hear you or care about what you're going through. Praying needs to be said with the heart that believes. So that's the most important thing. We can't be praying to God thinking, oh, you know, I don't know if I can do it this time, you know, and already have a poor attitude and, and a mindset of self-doubt. But we have to believe and trust in him with a stable mind. That means that we have to set our mind on believing in him. Believing that he's going to help you to learn about your thoughts and your actions. In Psalm 28, verses 6 through 7, I'm going to read this Bible verse. We read, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts with unwavering confidence. I like to use the word stability. In him, I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with song I shall give him thanks and praise. Also, I want to go on to read another Bible verse based on the word supplication, just to take that a little bit further. So what do you think the word supplication means? So supplication means that we're in prayer, but we're in a, we're, we're, it's heartfelt, that we're in a state of honor and reverence before God, bringing our knees before him as his servant, okay? So let me go on to read this Bible verse in 1 Kings uh, chapter 8, verse 28, we read, Ye have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. And that's King Solomon, uh, you know, praying to, praying to Jesus. So what did he say, right? He's saying that he's coming to him with a servant's heart. And that's what God wants from us. That's the attitude that he's, that he's hoping that we carry deep within our heart. When you feel weak, Turn to God in prayer, and the Lord will be the strength to keep you going in your weight loss success. Rejoice in him, and he will pick you up with love and mercy. Believe that God wants you to reach your weight loss goals, but most of all, he wants you to live a healthy life for the rest of your life. So instead of getting frustrated with your actions, search your heart and find out what you're thinking about. That is really, really important. Find out what is getting in the way. Is it my poor attitude? Am I minimizing something? 
Am I feeling like maybe I'm under pressure lately? Search your heart. Then ask God in prayer what you're going through to deliver you from that and receive total forgiveness because Jesus loves you. Now I'm going to read off a few keys for our lesson to take with you. So key number one is the root of frustration is from our self-centered motivations rather than a Christ-centered motivation. When we give our heart to God in truth, he fills us with his peace. Key number two, frustration comes from trying to do something over and over again until we realize that it's not working. Key number three, it's not going to work for too long because it's not just not part of God's plan. Key number four, our def defective thoughts are our way of reasoning our way to minimize or convince ourselves our way will eventually make us happy. Now here's the solution. We are reminded in today's Bible verse that prayer is your shield of faith. Whenever you are tempted to deal with your emotions with food, include God in prayer trusting that he hears your voice of supplication. Now today's, uh, I'm gonna have a uh, affirmation also for you to renew your mind, okay? So throughout your day, tomorrow, you're gonna renew your mind using this affirmation and also you can pray this affirmation. I choose to turn my food frustration into my faith in God. Now, I just want you to keep something in, 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 in the forefront of your mind, okay? Before I end tonight's message, I want you to keep right here, more prayer, more power. Little prayer, little power. And I want to close with one of my favorite, favorite of all favorite Bible verses that I keep right here as I renew my mind every day. Let me read that for you. It's just going to take me a minute to pull that up. If you want to turn your Bible, actually, to Galatians chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. Here's the Bible verse. Whoever sows to please their flesh from their flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. All right? So don't give up. I want you to you know, get close to God. Renew your relationship with Jesus. And, you know, I just hope that this lesson, that you found a blessing in it. Again, uh, if you want to, share the message with anybody that you feel will benefit from it, especially if they're in a state of hopelessness. And I just uh, want you to know that I'll be praying for you. Thank you for joining me. God bless. See you. Bye-bye. And to your health.